Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arts, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about um, understanding our hardware in terms of uh, dynamic dispatch and virtual function calls. So let's go ahead and open up our example, and what we really care about here is what is the cost of something like dynamic dispatch, um, and how does that relate to what the hardware is actually doing underneath, and how do we really understand what's going on when, say, we've got a big hit in performance. So We'll use a pretty simple example to get this point across, and we'll have this struct, right? And then we'll have uh, some inheritance, right? So dog will inherit from mammal, and we'll have a virtual function uh, get some number that will be implemented by each of the objects. So mammal will have its implementation. Uh, dog and cat both have their own implementation. So at runtime, right, if we go ahead and uh, call this function, Right, it depends on what type of object we are. If we're a dog, we'll return two, a cat, three, and then if we're the base class mammal, we'll, we'll return uh, one. So we'll profile two different things here, and we'll try to understand what the difference is. So the first time, right, we'll create a vector of pointers right, to this uh, mammal object, and we'll call it zoo. And then inside of this fill, or with fill in, we'll go ahead and add uh, 10,000 uh, objects of mammal, dog, and cat type right into zoo right and these are going to be sequential so the first 10,000 will be mammal second 10,000 will be dog uh, third 10,000 will be cat right? and then all we'll do is we'll you know accumulate a, a total sum here uh, just by calling this uh, while we go over the entire vector and then in our second example we'll do a very similar thing the only difference is we're going to shuffle the vector this time so exact same amount of elements um, the only difference is we no longer have a consecutive number uh, or a consecutive um, range of mammal, a consecutive range of uh, dog, and a consecutive range of cat. But the sum is going to be exactly the same here. So let's go ahead and uh, compile this and see what happens. So we'll do uh, G++, right? So this is with Google Benchmark, by the way. Uh, so we'll do G++, VF calls. We have to link again. Uh, let's all go ahead and set the standard to C++ uh, 17. Right, and then we'll link against uh, lib benchmark, right, for Google Benchmark, as well as lib pthread 03, and then uh, let's just call it VF calls. Right, so, you know, before we actually run it, let's think about what's going on here. So, technically, both of the uh, benchmarks are doing the same amount of work, right? So, they're both going to iterate over um, a consecutive set of 30,000 objects, right? So, the vectors laid out linearly. Um, and then they're all just calling the exact same functions overall, uh, just in a different order. All right, so we'll go ahead and run it. And we see that VF unsorted is actually, you know, a whole heck of a lot worse than VF sorted, right? So let's under understand why this is. Uh, and the best way to understand this, you know, at least initially, is just to do a uh, perf stat and see what perf stat's actually going to give you. So to do that, right, so we'll run this, uh, but we'll call perf stat on both the implementations. So we'll do um, dash dash benchmark uh, filter, right, equals VF sorted first. And then we can also set uh, benchmark min time equal to something like three. And this just says how many seconds should I run this bit benchmark, right? So we can tell to run longer, that way we get, you know, a more accurate representation of what's going on. All right, so we'll go ahead and run it. See, it start, starts running, takes about, you know, three, five seconds, and we get some information here. So we get, you know, uh, the number of context switches, the number of page faults, cycles, instructions. So an IPC of about 1.56, we get the number of branches and the branch misses. So only 0.01% of all branches miss. It's pretty good. Okay. So um, the next thing we can do, let's go ahead and do it on a VF unsorted, right? So we just add un there and we'll compare them. All right, so after about two, three seconds, um, hmm, well, that's that doesn't look good. Whenever we see red, right, that's usually a bad thing. In this case, we're actually, the, the branches are actually missing 22% of the time, right? And this all goes back down to hardware, right? So in hardware, you've got a thing called a branch predictor, and it basically looks at the history of the branches you've taken in the past, and it says, okay, well, you know, based upon these program counter values and this history that I have, you know, I'm gonna say, okay, you know, it can predict if a branch is going to be taken or not taken, and it can even predict uh, the target as well. So in this case, 
you know, the branch misses we're getting is about 22%, which is you know, way more than we're getting in this case, right? So, um, and the reason for this is because in the other case, we had a very predictable access pattern, right? So 10, 000, for 10,000 times, we're going to be calling the virtual function um, for mammal and then for dog and then for cat. But after we shuffle everything around, all of a sudden that call, right, or that virtual function you know, it's not predictable anymore, right? So it's, you know, it's, you know, pretty randomized. So we're going to be jumping around and maybe we'll do dog, then dog, but then maybe we'll go to cat, right? And then maybe we'll go to mammal, back to dog, etc. And so because of this, right, we end up getting fairly uh, poor performance here, right? And so we go from getting about, uh, you know, 1.56 instructions per cycle down to 0.3 instructions per cycle. Right, and it takes a whole lot longer to run. Right, and we can even look at this at a bit more fine grain of a level. So we can say, you know, perf record, and we can look at that inner loop that's causing us so much trouble. So we'll look at the sorted version first. Run it for three seconds, and then we can call a perf report. Right, and this will generate a report for us. And we see most of our time is here in this uh, VF sorted function. And then we see over here we've got the uh, virtual function, right? So get some number for dog, mammal, and cat, all taking about the same amount of time, which is about you know six percent of the overall overhead. Most of our overhead is actually within VF sorted itself. And we can go ahead and go in here and we'll zoom in. And here's our inner loop here. So we see that you know we're moving some pointer in, we're moving it over by eight, right? So addresses 64 uh, bits, right? Eight bytes, so we move it over by eight. Uh, down here, we've got to compare and jump not equal, so that's you know basically checking if we're done with our loop yet. But over here, you see most of the time spent on this call queue. If we go to any of these other calls, right, we see that okay, this move SS, right, so this is going to be actually getting the uh, uh, this is going to be getting the uh, floating point number, right, that we're returning. And, but most of our times here at this return queue, but we see a very different profile if we call perf record on vf unsorted so let's go ahead and run that right and then we'll call perf report after that's done right so remember most of our time is in that vf uh, sorted function but now we see it's a pretty even split here right so now all of a sudden these calls right to these uh, get some number are now 20 percent of the overhead right and we go here right and we see this we've got this move and this uh, call queue right so this call queue is basically a branch right so we're having to uh, you know jump to some uh, to some function right so we're dereferencing some pointer right so this rax is some address and that's going to be basically finding what our virtual function is right now you know because you know the branch predictor is having a, you know a lot harder of a time figuring out what we're actually going to access next you know all of a sudden these virtual function calls uh, that take a whole lot more time. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. So, you know, what do we kind of learn? You know, we have to, you know, take care in, in terms of even things like, you know, even though things like dynamic dispatch uh, and having virtual functions is a very convenient thing to have, right? Because we can have, you know, one, uh, multiple objects look like one thing and we can just call a virtual function. You know, they can have severe performance implications, you know, compared to if we're accessing, you know, all of these functions, you know, uh, in a row, right, consecutively, or if we're jumping around to different virtual functions because, you know, our, our vector is uh, kind of randomized. So the important things to keep in mind whenever we're programming is how we're actually calling these functions as well and how that affects things like our branch prediction, right? But that's, like I said, that's gonna do it for this time. Feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. We looked at C++ Crash Course under Optimizations. You can download this benchmark under VF Calls. Right, so it's right here. Right, like I said, feel free to download this, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick. I hope you have a nice day.